Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's episode 23 of Screw the Commute podcast, and we have a great Screw the Commuter on today's show. I'll get to telling you about her in a minute. Remember to check out episode 22 on upselling and advertorials. I'm going to really go deep in that training session on how you can make way extra money from the same number of visitors you have now. Today's sponsor is AmazingPublicSpeaking.com. This is a membership site with over 475 pro and public speaking training videos, plus audios and articles. We also have a corresponding free webinar called 30 Speaking Tips in 37.625 Minutes. All right. And we'll have a link to that in the show notes at ScrewTheCommute.com. All right, let's get to the main event. Vicki Sullivan is here. Yay, Vicki. And she is something. I'll tell you what, before I tell you all about her, she is really screwing the commute. Let me tell you that, folks. I mean, I tried to book her a couple weeks ago, and she's at the beach. So I said, okay, I'll get back when you get back. I call her a couple weeks later. I'm still at the beach, Tom. I said, what? I'm a slaving over a hot keyboard, and you're out at the beach all the time? She must be really doing a good job at screwing the commute. That's all I got to say. So anyway, I've known Vicky for, has to be over 25 years. And I got to tell you folks, you know, I'm kind of a clearinghouse for, for negativity in the business of speaking. People tell me when people are bad. I have never heard one thing ever about this lady bad. Her clients love her. And uh, I just want the, the world to know that uh, from my end that I would have heard about it if there was anything wrong with it, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, Vicki is internationally recognized as one of the top market and brand strategists for experts and thought leaders since 1989. I mean, I was just in diapers, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she specializes in standing out in crazy crowded markets. Her clients range from world-renowned astronauts New York Times best-selling authors to executives in the B2B space. Vicky, are you ready to screw the commute? <laughs> All right, I don't want to get punched out from, <laughs> from anybody on your end. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. My husband's pretty mellow. It's, I'm the crazy one. You know, I'm the crazy one. All right, so you're ready then, right? So, Absolutely. So tell everybody uh, what you do. Well, I help smart, cool people stand out in marketplaces where everybody is successful and everybody's got a good story. Did you say smart and cool people? Is that what you said? Yes, I did. <laughs> that is great. I never heard that one before. All right. <laughs> so all you uncool people, don't listen. This is only right. for cool people today. All That's right. right. No heads <laughs> allowed. No, no. You've been doing this for a long time. Absolutely. Over 30 years now. You, yep. When did you join a National Speakers Association? I think it was back in 1990. Okay. Well, that was year, that's why I've known you from, uh, I was in 91. So that's uh, how long I've known you. Wow. So, yeah. so uh, go into a little bit deeper are the things you help people with. Well, at this point, what, what I do is because as you know, I've studied the market, mm -hmm. you know, for the whole time that I've, that I've been doing this. I help people find the holes in the market that they can dominate. So we really change the game for my clients so that they can pick and choose the clients that they want to work with. And you do a good, great job of it too. And people, uh, like I said, people rave about the things you've done for them. Now, did oh. you ever actually have a job? Yes. <laughs> back in my, back when the dinosaurs roamed the planet, <laughs> I was a lobbyist for a healthcare industry. Wow, and, I didn't yeah, know that. So I'm a former former political operative, and I at that age I was more of a trusty sidekick to the bigger lobbyists, mm -hmm. you know, because of my age and all. And uh, and yeah, so I uh, I managed you know initiative ballot initiative campaigns. I initiated rapid response campaigns, and also set up a speakers bureau. That's amazing. Now what? This is a good a good chance to get a perspective. What was healthcare like in those days compared to what it is now? 
Uh, just a different kind of crazy. Uh, <laughs> you know, everyone was still concerned about cost containment. You had a lot of employers worried about the cost, mm -hmm. but you had more access. You didn't have the tragedies that you hear about now where people are just going without health care. It, it, people, it, the access was more there. Oh, yeah. I see. And what was the turning point for you when you said, you know what? This is not for me. I want to be the boss. I want to be on my own. How did that transition happen for you? Well, what happened was my mentor left, who was the chief lobbyist, and I didn't like my new boss. And okay. she didn't like me. So you know where this is heading. I have to go, <laughs> you know. And uh, I am an accidental entrepreneur. Okay. I, I got into the business because I love the people. And that's the only, and, and I couldn't find anyone to pay me what I thought I should be paid. So I'm like, okay, I'm going out on my own. And what year was this roughly? 1987. 87 is when you left the lobbying industry. Yep. And mm -hmm. was it an instantaneous thing or what happened between then and when you started your business? Sure. Well, I really thought I was going to be a bag lady, you know, and I thought, <laughs> I, I really thought this is it. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to flip burgers because all I knew was politics mm -hmm. and I didn't want to be in politics anymore. So I thought, well, I need to go to McDonald's. So <laughs> I found a trade association ad, you know, in, in one of the journals that asked for someone to promote a professional speaker for about 10, 15 hours a week. And I thought, well, this will extend my savings until I find a real job. <laughs> okay. But that's, so that was the idea. And I started working for this speaker, and it was just, I just love. Is this a surprise or confidential who it was? It's a, it is confidential. Okay, all right. And because they're no longer in the business. Okay. And, but I just loved them, and I loved their message, and I loved the fact that they were a good person, as opposed to what oh, I was experiencing in the political environment. <laughs> And it's like people were, they were really out to do good things. And, you know, like a lot of politicians, but, you know, the system can corrupt a little bit. So I was just enamored about being able to use my gifts in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so within three weeks, I was working full time. I had multiple speakers and the rest, they say, is history. Oh, wow. I didn't know that story. That's really great. And, and so you're kidding. You mean... People in politics aren't really squeaky clean and lovable. <laughs> what? I don't understand that. I know, I know. Sad yet true. Uh, Sad yet true. Boy, I'm just floored here. I might have to take a break here. I don't know such a thing. <laughs> so what would you say to anybody that's sitting out there in a cubicle and thinking about, oh, I want to live the life that she's doing. I want to be at the beach for a month so Tom can't get a hold of her. Uh, <laughs> Or maybe it was two I, months. I don't know. How long yeah, really. <laughs> uh, I would say, I'd say be prepared for a roller coaster ride and remember that it's totally worth it. It sure is. Now, were you, now, come on now, were you actually doing some work from the beach? Absolutely. Okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm married for tech support. So my whole office <laughs> can be, can be set up inside of 15 minutes. Wow. Oh, yeah. You married for tech support. That's a really good point for all you screwballs out there. And I, I agree. You know, I always talk about getting young geeks, but why not marry one? You know, you have to pay them, you know? You know what? And, and he married for first class upgrades, so it worked. You know? <laughs> and it lasted. How long have you been married? Five years. Five years. All right. Well, that's pretty good. Now, I, I was telling you, I, got, I saw a cartoon where this little kid was talking to his dad, and he says, I... You give me a raise in my allowance, I'll give you unlimited in-house tech support for 24-7. <laughs> that is a killer yeah. offer. Yeah. So um, so give us a couple tips about working for yourself or for getting into what you do to, to brand people. What are some of the things you can do to help people out there in the audience? Well, the first thing I tell everybody is you need to pay attention to the marketplace. You know, a lot of folks just focus on what they're passionate about and they're focused on what their gifts are, which is important, but that's just the first step. And we hear that a lot, like just do what you love. Well, if what you love is making you broke, you better think exactly. about that, right? Exactly. And so you do need to kind of look up and look around and look at what's getting attention and what people are paying for and what is going for free. A lot of folks don't 
make that distinction. So they expect to be paid for what everybody else is giving away for free, mm -hmm. and that's just not going to work. Right. So you got to do that. The second thing I tell people is own your corner. And this is a major part of my work right here. You know, you can't just put your shingle up and expect clients to fall out of trees. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not going to work that way. Again, you got you to gotta look at what's going on in your marketplace, what's getting paid for, what's considered worthy of being paid for as far as a solution or a perspective, and then you define the role you play based upon the hole in the market that you see. Mm -hmm. So it's really about how do you look at the chaos and see what's not being done, what is not what is the need that is not being expressed? And then you create a platform or a persona around that. So you find that hole, and then you get to define the game. So I tell people that. The third thing is, and this is just for working for yourself. Anybody should do this. I think you should have what I call a bite me fund. <laughs> and, you know, that is a bank of cash that you have so you can uh, – refuse anybody that's going to make your life miserable i like that i never heard that term did you coin that term a bite me <laughs> <laughs> i should uh, and yet i have, see i would know? call it a screw you fund but uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just term semantics there <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> yeah that's one of the things i just love I mean, you know i've never had a job other than a little bit of high school and college and that's what I love most about it. I don't have to deal with anybody I don't like. And, yep. and I deal with people I like, and so it's always fun. So th those are all great tips. Now, have you ever gotten screwed? <laughs> I mean, of in business, course. in business. Come oh, on. Of course, of course. <laughs> I, think, I think that's a rite of passage. I think you're not a real entrepreneur <laughs> until someone tries to rip you off. Uh -huh. I mean, that's a good point. I really, I truly believe that. When I first started out, and uh, this was after I worked with the speaker that I loved, I fell into the wrong hands, and I was an agent for another professional speaker. And she tried to screw me out of like $25,000 mm. in commission, oh, boy. which at that time was like a whole lot of money. Right. And so I got a lawyer and ex who said to me, hey, this is going to be really hard to sue or you don't have any leverage. And I said, leverage, from my political days, I understood leverage. So I said, <laughs> so I said hold my beer, darling. <laughs> so, so when this lady started getting her speaker fee checks, she noticed that both of our names were on the check. And that's because I went back to all the people that I booked her who loved me because we had such a good time. Right. And I explained the situation. And lo and behold, a majority of people – know someone or love someone that works on commission. Mm -hmm. So they totally understood where I was coming from. So they put both names on the check. <laughs> that was my leverage. And so she can't cash the check without my signature. So that got her to the table to negotiate a settlement. Oh, wow. That is smart. <laughs> I get as lobbyists are smart. That's, that's a really great idea. I would have never thought of that. Leverage, baby. See, it's I would have just that. threatened to kill her. <laughs> that's what, <laughs> so, that's what I did from my, my small town background. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Now, anything funny uh, happened to you in all this uh, all this work you've been doing? Well, a lot has, but the most bizarre thing was back when I was in college, I was slinging drinks at a biker bar. To put my <laughs> you? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got a trouble picturing Vicki <laughs> Sullivan, refined gorgeous vicky Sullivan slinging you don't have tattoos all over either oh no, no 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 oh no. my god i mean this was for gas and groceries right <laughs> so so anyway so i was there uh you know one night and the big leader of the biker bar comes who's especially violent i mean he had a really bad reputation for violence and i screwed up his his old lady that's what they called it <laughs> yeah <the> right time. <laughs> his old lady's drink. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to die. Right. <laughs> and the bar could not get this drink right. So by the time that he left, this woman didn't have her drink right and he paid for it. So I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm going to get, I'm going to get hurt. This is, this is bad, bad, bad. So as everyone's leaving, you know, he pulled me aside and I'm like, okay, this is it. My life's over. He says, you know, my old lady was being a witch with a bee. And I really respect the way that you handled her. 
so good on you. And wow. I thought, okay, so he's going to spare my life. And then he hesitates and he says, you know, if you need anybody stabbed <laughs> or shot, and I'm like, let's just stop right there. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I prefer beating them with a hammer, a tra- <laughs> exactly. bike chain. That's what you're- <laughs> and I'm like, you know, as I look back on it, it's like I have been complimented in so many ways, but there was never a compliment like that. That's you for know? sure. So- <laughs> and uh, let, hey, Vicky, uh, could you get me his number? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you still know? <laughs> I so might have some work for him. Life, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so what do you like best about working for yourself and what's the worst part about working for yourself? Well, the best part is I can just do whatever I want, whenever I want, with whomever I want. So it is that that total freedom. Uh, The worst part is, you know, my boss can be a tyrant sometimes. (laughs) 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 You know, when you're a perfectionist, it's it's not a good thing. It's, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, we can be our worst worst nightmares sometimes, for sure. Absolutely. So we got to take a brief break here. Hey, everybody out there, have you ever thought about getting paid to speak and you're not sure if you're ready to invest in a lot of training? Well, I got the solution. AmazingPublicSpeaking.com has over 475 public and professional speaking techniques. It's got openings, closings, attention-gaining devices, humor, the business of speaking. It's all the stuff I've used to make millions and millions of dollars in the speaking business over many years. And it's only 97 bucks for an entire year. So you want to check that out. And also we have a free webinar that's complimentary to the site. It's called 30 Speaking Tips in 30.675 Minutes. So check this out. It'll all be in the show notes at screwthecommute.com. Now, Vicki, what's a typical day look like for you? Well, you know, because I'm old now, I got to work out <laughs> You're not old. You look like you're... Like 13 years old. <laughs> Yay. Well, that's because I work out every day. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I'll have some breakfast and check email. And, and I've got my top three things that I got to get done every day. So I'll spend a lot of time analyzing the marketplace, okay. looking for holes for my clients. And then any time left over, you know, I'll write or I'll work on some lower priorities. And, and then I'm off to act like I'm married. <laughs> well, you mean asking for tech support? Is that, is that what it is? <laughs> Among other things. <laughs> oh, all right. So I guess that's how you, the next question was, how do you stay motivated? I guess to get into that end of the day, maybe. So how well, do you stay motivated? I love my clients. Mm-hmm. I, I have been so blessed. Um, I, I just love my clients. So so working with them and their brilliance, that that really keeps me motivated. How can you, how many can you handle at one time? Because I know you're a very thorough person. It depends on my travel, to be honest with you. Um, sometimes when I'm at the beach, I'll take less mm-hmm. than when I'm home. Uh, when I'm home, I'm more focused. But when I'm at the beach and it's sunny out, I want to play hooky. <laughs> and you know, so I am, because I am such a perfectionist, I am so thorough. Right. It really varies. But I make sure that I don't promise anything that I can't deliver. That's right. So I'm real, so I'm real careful about what I promise, and it it's always about the schedule, you know, what I can what I can deliver. But I'm also very curious, and that is a great motivating factor too. So the markets fascinate me. What people think are special fascinate me. So. So I love learning new things, and I love looking at all the different moving parts and stuff. And so, so that really keeps me motivated, too. So what, how can people take advantage of your services? Uh, what's your website, and what are you promoting nowadays? Oh, thanks. Well, I'll tell you what. If someone goes to my website, VickiSullivan.com, we'll, and that's Vicky with I-E, yeah. Yeah, and we'll have that in the show notes for everybody. Perfect. Uh, you go there, and right on the front page, if you sign up for my for my blog, Tips, Trends, and Tirades, uh, <laughs> and t- heavy on the tirades sometimes. And stabbings uh, if you're a really good customer. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you can, you'll get a free report called Market Trends and How to Take Advantage of Them to Stand Out in a Crowd. So this is kind of what's going on in the marketplace and how you can use it to your advantage. 
Great. And that's at VickiSullivan.com. And we'll have that in the show notes for everybody. So you can just click on it and then zoom right over there and get that great report. And then um, th- how do you uh, work with clients? If someone engaged you, how, how does it go? Well, because my work is so customized, mm-hmm. it, it really depends on the, how, the, how the client likes to work and also what they need. You know, some clients just need flyby, what I call flyby advice, where they have like a book coming out and they're like, I want to make sure this book is positioned to make me the top dog. Like I had a client once that we worked on his book and within five days after launch, he was on CEO Reads as a top biller, you Mm -hmm. know, so... So that was good for him because he was a consultant and he worked with those folks. So that was perfect for him. So it, it can be small. It can be as big as, hey, create my brand, create my platform, make sure that I stand out here. I really specialize in chaotic markets. And so I love that. So it's really by the mm-hmm. project and it depends on, you know, what people need and my role. You know, some people want to just rent my brain. Some people want me to do it for them. So it just go. depends on what they want. Yeah. Very customized. And like I said, folks, I have never heard a negative word about her other than from her husband one time when she asked for too much tech support. But <laughs> other, <laughs> other than that, she's, exactly. uh, she's awesome. So do you have any parting thoughts for all the screwballs out there that listen to this? Yeah, I do. And, and this would be it. Define success on your own terms. There's a lot of peer pressure, especially among industry associations, about what you have to do. And I think the reality that I've learned over the years is that all you need to do is what you need to do to be happy and successful. And if you know what enough is for you, you're not going to become a raging workaholic and you're not going to do stuff that you really don't want to do. Great, great advice from someone that's been there and done that. So how do people reach you? Is it at the same site? Yeah, just go to that site. All my stuff's there. Contact me is there. Go there and I will, I'll take good care of them. And there's no doubt about that, folks. This has been Vicki Sullivan. Thanks so much, Vicki, for taking time out of the beach and for your Fiji trips and everything but work <laughs> kind of things you do to talk to little old me. Oh, I really appreciate it. you. We <laughs> always have fun, Tom. We always have fun. And uh, everybody, make sure you check out AmazingPublicSpeaking.com. It's only 97 bucks for the year. Check out all Vicky's stuff in the show notes at ScrewTheCommute.com. And we will see you on the next episode. 